here we are, Barbara, the painter. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for giving us uh, the chance to talk with you. Thank you for inviting me. I'm really glad to, to speak with you and to meet your audience at least this way. You have noticed that I mostly paint people, mm -hmm. uh, figurative uh, paintings. You're still in that way? I'm sorry? You're still in this way? Yes. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, human beings, uh, despite all our minuses, uh, all our mistakes, I, I find human beings as the as um, the best inspiration for me. And that I feel that that's probably my task as a painter or artist to try to come a little bit closer to a possible answer to a question, what is it to be a human? What makes us human, human in good and bad? For example, maybe that might be the freshest one in your memory after the movie, which is the last painting we see in the movie, which is the when it ends. So there is a painting of Bertil and me. Mm -hmm. Maybe in this one I can tell you. Um, so from the from the stretching the canvas, preparing the canvas till the last brushstroke, it was definitely um, two months. Two months. Two months of work where I was back then, I was lucky enough that I was uh, able to paint every day <laughs> and the whole day. So when I say two months, I actually really mean every day work from literally morning to... Every day, night. from Monday to Sunday? Totally. Your husband must be really happy. <laughs> <laughs> he's a, no, he's an angel. He's an angel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's, he's called he's his an own angel. dinners, you know. <laughs> we really know. I mean, it's, it's quite strange because, uh, you know, we feel like we know a bit about you, no? Because we 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 have seen a bit of your private life. We have seen you as an artist. We know your husband. What is the relationship between uh, Benjamin and you? Benjamin, the director. It's brilliant. I mean, Benjamin is... It's such a wonderful person, really, uh, not only as a director, as his profession, but as a, as a human being. Mm -hmm. And I felt that uh, from the very first second when, when we met and uh, he introduced me to his idea or he proposed me whether Bertil and I would agree to maybe start this project with him. And uh, I remember at first it was a phone call. That's how, how uh, we first got in touch. And we met just the next day, and I was so surprised. What for a young man uh, mm -hmm. came to the meeting? I, you know, I expected for some reason I expected somebody older, but there came this uh, quite happy bloke, you know, tall Norwegian with a decent beard. Uh, but right away, I, I felt that um, this guy is uh, really—he's uh, no shit. He's real professional, but at the same time, very empathic and very intelligent, which is quite a rare combination, I would say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so he gained my trust right away. Um, but it was more important actually at that time how Bertil would react to meeting Benjamin and to hear the proposal, because let's face it, it was actually Bertil who was much more vulnerable at that time mm -hmm. due his drug addiction and all, the, all his life story. So, I mean, I mean, I did not really put much at stake because I was just standing in my studio and painting all the time, you know? There was not much fun you could film about me, uh, but it was Bertil whose work was... I don't work. agree with that. We will talk about that later, but uh, yeah, sorry, because I... You're not meant to agree, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I, well, um, you, talk, uh, you are talking about Bertil. Um, what about Bertil? What is he doing? You are still in contact? We are in contact, of course. Indeed, indeed uh, now it's a little bit less because, I'm, as I told you, I'm physically not in Norway. Mm -hmm. we, we are just a little bit writing now with Bertil, but through the social media, of course, I see how he's doing. He has a, he has a girlfriend. As far as I can guess, he manages to stay away from drugs, mm -hmm. which is wonderful. And he is working at the social project in Oslo at this moment, which is, uh, it's called Oslo Hutset. That means Oslo house or housing. So it's actually a social living for, for people with a similar past like Bertil with drug mm -hmm. addictions. Uh, so it's sort of like a protected 
living housing for those people, you know, apartments that is supported by the municipality of Oslo. Uh, but of course, you as the one who takes in, in this program, so you have to go through regular tests, whether you stay away from drugs, you have to have some perspective, whether you continue your education or you have some job to apply to or to go to. And uh, Bertil is one of the managers of this place. And I think he's very proud of mm -hmm. himself and he definitely should be because that's a, it's a great achievement. And I, I, I believe he, he enjoys this position because he likes to feel useful I and mean, we all like to feel useful. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's good mm -hmm. that Bertil found this way how to you know also turn his bad past into something good because all the people that work in this uh, project, actually, they all have once been uh, having issues with drug addiction. So, you know, all the people knew what it's about. So there's quite serious understanding amongst each other. So um, I knock on the wood. I hope it's going to last as long as possible. Yeah. I'm happy to hear that Bertil is uh, in that way. I'm, well, I think that everybody's happy because of that. It's quite, it's quite strange, the sensation, because you are watching the documentary, but uh, sometimes uh, it looks like it's uh, fiction. I mean, the, uh, the camera is shooting always in the right moment at the right place. So how did you do that? Or there is any dramatization? In there before I fully answer you, I just want to illustrate that question on one specific moment, which was um, back in 2020, the movie had a premiere at Sundance Film Festival. Mm -hmm. We were lucky enough to go there. That was all just last month before the COVID stroke. Mm -hmm. um, and so there was one screening and afterwards were Q&A, something like what we're doing now, but it was with a live audience. And one woman at the audience actually uh, asked me, where where did I study acting? Because it was so well acted. Basically, uh, she really thought all the time that she was watching feature fiction movie. So when I told her uh, with the support of two glasses of wine, like, uh, but madam, this was a documentary, uh, she really could not believe. Um, why that effect is here, I believe it's because Benjamin, the director, he was, most of the time, he was the only person on the sort of film set, let's say. He was the camera and sound guy. Mm -hmm. So he actually was almost all the time around me on Bert or Bertil. He was given all the freedom and all the time that he needed from his boss that allowed Benjamin to really be always there when something was about to happen or... Uh, of course, being there when something unpredictable happened. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't remember if it's correct, but I think Benjamin has all in all footage of about 300 hours because the filming lasted three years, so two and a half years. So he has like three years with you. Three years yeah. with, with a camera in your house. I think it was two years, two and a half. Actually, it's wow. something I'm not sure. Oh, no. Two oh, no. and a half years or three Even years. two years or a half, <laughs> excuse me. But, uh, yes, oh. it, it was, uh, but once more, you know, Benjamin is, uh, as I told you uh, at the beginning of our interview, Benjamin is really very empathic and sensitive man. So after a while, you actually quite easily forget about his presence, you know. Um, of course, always somehow unconsciously or more or less unconsciously, you know that there is a camera around you. But uh, it's probably also the, 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 through the fact that the filming took so long, you actually learn how to ignore the fact that there is some eye watching you. you know. Mm -hmm. So this is why Benjamin managed to be there at many crucial moments. Uh, so it's really live camera. It's really all happening as it's filmed. And there I do understand that to many people it feels like, because we are used to have documentaries which are you know, mostly talking heads or it's a, or a combination of, of that. But here you really watch the action in real time, basically. Mm -hmm. what, one of the reasons why I personally said yes to Benjamin to, to let's start the project was, um, of course, yes, let the world see my art. 
I'm not saying that this was not somehow in my in my mind, like it might be good promotion for my work. But primarily it really was um the my wish to um to give uh, the story of Bertil and me to give a little more uh, attention to it and to to try to bring it to those who want to see it because Benjamin came to to our lives when we already have known each other with Bertil. We were sort of at the beginning of the friendship. You know, I've already made one painting of him. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was not that the, the film started while we actually were at the court case. You know, this was a bit like retrospectively made. And I, I felt that there is really some, some quite important message uh, in the story of Bertil and me. For many reasons and i felt that benjamin could give it the right attention and right focus and i was right mm -hmm. so uh, this for me was also quite a lot of the um, motor that that kept me still running and or still agreeing or accepting that there is somebody almost constantly present in in our lives mm -hmm. uh, i believe once bertil and me subscribed to subscribed to to participate in this documentary, that means you're sort of signing up for for the fact that you you should be there fully and exposed. You can't cheat. You, we don't want to cheat on the audience. Mm -hmm. I can't speak for Bertil now, so I speak for for me myself. It's like if I don't go fully and vulnerably or exposed into my painting. I don't believe that the work would be good. The result would be good. Mm -hmm. And this film, in my opinion, is a piece of art as well. So if you would try to hide some things, if you would try to manipulate some things, um, it would not work as I hope it works uh, now in the result. You just have to go fully for it and on mm -hmm. it. You have to risk everything and go there. I mean, don't hide things. That's really nice. No, it's, it's true. Probably, I mean, uh, you know, now now it's already some years, of course, since the movie came out. It's actually four years uh, ago since the movie came out. Mm -hmm. So I believe I already have some time distance from all the fever. So I can say that uh, I still stick to my word that it's uh, it was very good decision of both Bertil and me that we decided to really open ourselves, not only to ourselves but also to the to Benjamin, who managed to catch it on tape. And then, of course, uh, it was a very, very big part of the success of the movie was the editing of the movie. So there is like endless okay. credits. The editing, the the editing is amazing. You have to guide through the 300 hours to pick mm -hmm. the one and a half. <laughs> I mean, you've been a painter before the movie. Now you are a painter, a painter after the movie. Not the very beginning, no, just two years, no, three years after. Any change? I mean, uh, any more galleries calling you because they want to expose your your work? What happened in your life right now? Uh, of course, there was, a, there was an impact after the movie came out. Um, and let's say now I can go to the food store and buy myself grapes and coffee. And <laughs> So thank you for asking. Mm -hmm. um, interestingly enough, most of the approaches I have from the outside world is not inst art institutions, not galleries or museums, but it's private people who actually want to um, exchange their hardly earned money with my painting. Mm -hmm. um, and this is just wonderful for me because to you know, to, to witness that there are people who are willing to actually take or have part of me, which is my painting, and to put it on the wall in their homes. This is actually quite a big uh, contribution of the person because they're actually subscribing in living with my painting in their everyday life. Mm -hmm. And that's not a little thing, you know. No, I mean, I painting know. or visual art that you put on the wall, it's actually something you do see every day when you live. You know, we, we all have our favorite songs or movies, but that's you don't listen to your favorite song every day, you know. No. But painting or, or visual art hanging on the wall, that's really it works on different levels. It's like 
you don't always consciously take it in, but it, in subliminal level, it, it works on you. You know, you, you are in everyday contact and dialogue with it. So for me, this is a very big, um, it's a very big compliment to me that somebody wants to live with my art. No, it's a <laughs> huge compliment. That's true. That's true. I'm so happy to share these moments with you. Uh, thanks a lot. Thanks, thanks thank a lot. you all, and thank you for doing the wonderful project that you do to bring art and films to, to the people. It's a very important work. Thanks for that. Thanks, Barbara. It was very nice to talk to you.